what is going on guys? Today we're doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with my good friend, Alec. Alec, what up? Hello. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> uh, feel free to introduce yourself and be like, hey, this is what I do. So, I'm Alec Balaje. I'm a wedding videographer only. And I'm also studying at Ryerson University for film studies. So, yeah, I'm like in the film industry, but I'm also um, in love with wedding videography. It's a good way to make money and to travel. And it keeps my creative vibes going. So, I need more tips and I need the Jeremy's <laughs> wisdom to get me going. So, oh, you're too kind. Yeah. Yes, but we're going to book you up for this summer and next summer. So basically today, um, Alec wants to learn how he can market his business more to get more bookings. Because right now, yeah. he does amazing work. And I know you guys oh, yeah. can relate that even if you have amazing work, if you can't get it out to the right people, you're not going to be booked up totally for the entire season. So what, do you, what are you feeling right now? Yeah. Like right now, I don't, I, don't, I don't have that many weddings. Like I, I've got enough, but I, my goal was to get more. So I just find why not try, you know, the extra mile to just really work for it. Totally, so. totally. And that's yeah. what we're talking about today. So when I ever want to start to book something or make a side hustle or something, I always start off with what do I actually want to achieve so I can work towards that. I'm sure you've already done it, but I just want to talk it through so everybody listening can, if you're comfortable saying some of your goals. If not, you can tell us fake goals so we don't know that you actually want to <laughs> conquer the world or something. So this summer and next summer, how many weddings would you want to book? Well, this summer I would like to at least book more than 10. Right. Yeah. Um, which I don't have, the, I, right now I only have, I think about six weddings. Nice. So, so we need to book can, four more to hit your goal. That's really at awesome. Least. I mean, if I can get like 15, I think it would be like insane. But realistically, I think four more would be great. But if I can get more than that, I'd be much happier as well. But yeah. Totally. That's very doable. So with videography, what's awesome about what in the position you're right now is that at this stage of the game, a lot of couples have already booked their wedding photographer, but they're sometimes second guessing if they should get a wedding videographer. So for you, like we were already talking about, like running a, a last minute deal, that'd be awesome. Um, it's not too late to hire your wedding videographer type of ad because a lot of people, I've booked wedding videography a month before a wedding in the middle of wedding season um, because people, that's kind of like their second priority, even though wedding yeah. videography, in my opinion, is a little more important than uh, photography. They're both amazing. They yeah. All right. So you want to book five more? That's awesome. That's so doable. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll try my best. Yeah. Totally. To. All right. So let's talk about marketing. What have you done so far to get those nine so far, or those ten? So so far, what I've been doing a lot, I've been getting most of my clients through my Facebook page, and. The great thing is that I do have a lot of activity on my Facebook page. I don't actually keep it active as much as I should, but a lot of people follow it whenever I do have some, you know, posts. Right. So that's like a huge way because people do message me a lot saying, what's your pack, like send me your package, whatever. And then I send them like a PDF file of my different services that I offer and, you know, the deals with the travel expenses and all that. Totally. And then yeah. I also get a lot of people from my website. Yeah. But Instagram, I've never ever booked a wedding through my Instagram pay, um, account, which is specifically my um, business for wedding videography Instagram. Right. So that's like one thing I'm like curious about is, you know, how to really approach people through Instagram because right. it is getting the big thing. But Facebook and my website is the most... Um, the top two. Right. The so, two. <laughs> awesome. So let's we'll talk about social media to begin with. Facebook and Instagram. Uh, when you post on Instagram and Facebook, you're going to post it onto your Facebook page, your Instagram page. Um, your friends are going to see it. Your hashtags are going to be there. Maybe your mom and your mom's best friend share it, which is awesome. So that is called organic reach, as you already already know. So like yes. that's just like you're in your own inner network, which is really powerful to hit that. Um, and that's how you're getting a lot of the business, which is awesome. The next thing that we're, you and I are going to tap into is paid reach. Now, this is where you can actually start to whoosh, hit those targets and hit those goals because uh, what we're going to do is set up an ad. We're going to set up an ad. We're going to make a photo. We're going to put some ad copy. We're going to have a call to action that says go to my website to learn more. And then we're going to pay that ad to be in front of couples 
engaged brides that are engaged fiance or what, what have you, and they're going to see it on their Facebook feed. So you get to choose what that ad is shown in front of. So you make the ad and then you tell Facebook, I want it to be shown to just engaged couples that live in Toronto. They have to like puppies. They have to like coffee. They have to be hipsters. In addition, they have to like adventure photography. Like you can choose their interests. You can choose yeah. their income level. You can choose where they live. You can choose everything. So we're going to show you how to do that. So would Super it be powerful. smart if I would do a ad for, let's say, because like the gay wedding that I shot, totally. would it be smart to do only like reaching out to gay couples? Yeah, and there's definitely have an a gay video, yeah. and yeah. then another ad which is, um, you know, like early or like whatever mid twenties, fun people, whatever, like getting yes. married. Yeah, like a general audience. Awesome. So. so what we'll do, we'll do two ads because you okay. have two demographics that you want to hit. Uh, you want yeah. a general nice couple that's awesome and rad, and then you want, you know, the awesome gay weddings, which is super fun uh -huh. for you. So, oh, we'll, yeah. whoop, whoop. so there's actually options to show. So you can't see it right now, unfortunately, but right now I'm in the behind the scenes of Facebook marketing. I'm going to set up an ad as if we're targeting to a normal couple and uh, not normal, but like a, the first segment. Yeah, yeah. just the more general. Totally, yeah. like just a general. So you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. So in the behind the scenes right now, I'm an ads manager. What you're going to do is set up an engagement ad. So you're going to click engagement and then you're going to name it Toronto ad. You're going to name it Alec book last, last minute. And then you're going to choose to book, uh, to choose to make this ad to Toronto only. And then you can make it that they live around there. And then you're, you can choose the age between, they have to be between ages 19 to 28, that's going to be your target. Yeah. It, it can be anything, you get to choose. And then you get to choose. So is it smarter to maybe yeah. even like go even more specific, like 25 to, to 28? Or is it better to have some sort of wider range? Of uh, I prefer doing like 20, at least 20 or at least 19. Because if I, some people get engaged super young. Like if I can get a 19 year old, yeah, like, right. they're, that's sweet. They're so young and they probably want to work with you because <laughs> we're, you're right, you're right. we're the younger videographers in town. So that'd be awesome. Cool. So now you always want them. So there's the detailed targeting. That's what we're looking at right now. So you want to choose engage first. And then if you see there's a button that says narrow audience, if you click that now they have to be engaged. Plus they have to be whatever you choose below. So you can choose coffee. They have to be engaged. Plus they have to like coffee because usually you're probably going to get along with someone that likes coffee. Right? No, so basically, sure. like wine. Yeah. <laughs> can you wine. Say wine. Yes. Like you can do wine. wine. So what I did, um, basically how I learned of what should I do, basically I put me myself, like what I'm interested in, I looked at all those interests. So I like photography, I like investing, I like making YouTube videos, I like influencers, I like Instagram, I like adventures, mountains, traveling, and, um, books, I love self-improvement. So I just wrote everything, that's a good starting point because if you don't know what to target, just target someone that's just like you, that has yeah. to also be engaged and a girl or a guy that's age 20 to 28 that lives in Toronto and you'll probably hit them well because if you brand your website well to show your personality, they're going to relate to you like, like that. Like seconds. Yes. And you can even get more detail and creative. If you want to target engaged couples, um, they're the same sex marriage and plus they love wine. You can maybe have a picture of you like I'm, I'm holding a camera plus wine because you know, they're going to like wine and yeah. like, it'll, like you can get more creative or if it's coffee, you hold coffee. So you can make an ad set just for the wine lovers an ad set just for the coffee lovers and you can get creative like that. So you can get creative down the road, but for now we're just going to make a kind of general one. Okay. So right now you can't see it, but I'm choosing, okay, wine, nothing showed up for wine. So that's kind of sad. <laughs> so, okay. Stuff came up. So you can choose wine as an interest. They can be a wine maker. They go to wineries. Um, <laughs> They okay. like wine cellars, food and wine. So you can click all that. Okay. And then you can choose same sex relationships. There's 1.6 million people in Toronto that are same sex relationship on Facebook. So that's how many wow. people you can hit. So that's awesome. So I just clicked that. So right now they have to be engaged between 20 and 28, uh, same sex marriage, wine, coffee, plus they have to be engaged. That's who we're going to show this ad to. So that looks pretty good. We're going to go down. So this, what we're looking at now is the budget and schedule. You should always do a month at a time. And then I have a daily budget of $3 and then that looks good. 
And $2 then, like for the ad? Uh, for the day. So basically your ad's gonna run until it, you've paid $3 for that ad to show on Facebook, it disappears and then until the next day. And then next day it shows again, it shows for $3 and then it goes away, so. I see, okay, interesting. So there's two ways to make a creative. So now this is the next part of Facebook ads. There's two ways to make an ad. You can post one organically on your page. So if you remember my, my ad I made on Facebook, I made it on Facebook and then I made that post that was public an ad to show also on other people's newsfeed. Or you can create a, a new ad that you haven't posted but it's also an ad to show in front of couples. So there's two ways. You can select a post you already made or you can make a new post. So that's how I got that one post, um, this one down here. You can't see it, but it's down here. That's why yeah, I got this I'm one to yeah. en engage with all the couples in Calgary. What I did, I made it, I posted it, so then people know I'm going out there, it's good advertising. And then I also targeted that post to people that are just living in Calgary. They have to be engaged, and they have to live in Banff too as well, and be into Adventure Mountains coffee, so mm -hmm. I chose that. And then I told them to take the win, and then that's how I got that to be such, such an engaging post. So that's what we're doing. So I selected that post, or you can create a new post. I mean, I create a new ad that isn't public on your Facebook page. Oh, interesting. So you can make one that's already public. So you're just like boosting it even more. Or but you do can... you recommend? Do you recommend to have some sort of post that's all? Because like I mean, if I also put that public, does it hurt to but make it public I, on my page as well? I think it's awesome. I think doing a bit of both. Because what I like to do is always have one that's on my Facebook page because then when all the brides start commenting on it, like it, it makes it look really good uh, because it's public on my page. If I made only ones that are like hidden that no, no brides see on my Facebook page, like it's all like they see it active in the marketing, but it's not on my Facebook page. So there's pros and cons to both, which is good. Yeah, so the ad's looking good. Uh, right now I just, I, I used a selected post that I've already posted, the behind the scenes shoot. Um, okay. that I made that you helped me with, which was awesome. And then, mm -hmm. and then to make the ad, you just click confirm. And then this video will show to that advertising set and for that long, for that budget, for that audience. And, and for that video, is it recommended to have it uploaded on YouTube or directly on Facebook? Directly on Facebook is what I did oh, okay. because uh, you don't want them to go to YouTube unless you do. So now the next step to that is to make, you get to choose where they click to. So you can make them click to your website, a splash page. Um, sometimes it's good to experiment, make one ad go to your homepage, one ad go to your um, portfolio page, one ad go to a custom page you made that like shows your portfolio and contact right under. So you can see which one's the best because sometimes <laughs> if a couple goes, they see your work, they want to contact you right away. So then they scroll down and contact you. So that's okay. a good way to do it too. So experiment and then if that one's getting you the most, uh, the most traction, then phew, just keep using it. Keep using it, gangsta. So yeah. Okay, interesting. That's pretty good. That's now you can get more advanced with the marketing after that. So you can actually create a pixel. It's called a Facebook pixel. Uh, we're not going to do this, but I'm just going to educate you on what you can do. Yeah. So you can make a pixel. So if a bride goes to your website, they almost contact you, but they bounce off. You can make a new ad set that targets all the couples that went on your website but didn't contact you. So you can make a new ad that's a little more aggressive, like uh, book me in the next three weeks and you get a free highlight film. Or like, you wouldn't do that, but, uh, so it's only showing the people that were interested but maybe forgot to contact you on your website. So it's like, re, it's called retarget marketing. Interesting, and so, then, yeah. have you used that and like, have, have you seen um, like actual people who went on it the first time? And then contact you the second time. I've done some campaigns like, like that, but they weren't very productive. Like I just ended up spending more money to okay. retarget them. And uh, usually my first okay. ad sets are really cheap, cheap anyways. I usually pay like 23 cents per click, 16 cents per click, which is really cheap. And yeah, so that's kind of the basics of Facebook marketing. There's a lot of content. If you go on YouTube and search Facebook marketing, oh my gosh, you will get way more advanced videos than what I just showed right now. Um, Interesting. And this is still advanced, what we're talking about right now. That's still super awesome. Yeah. Easy to do, but you can get even more, you can nerd out about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what's cool is that we focus on a specific range of people. Yeah. I think that's like huge. I think when I thought about Facebook ads, I thought the, the best way to do it would be to just have a general public, but it's definitely not true. I feel like 
whoever you're focusing on, you may get more activity out of that than yes. just a general post. I'm just writing down your ad set that we just, just wrote down yeah, so people can sure. see it. I'm going to send you this, uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching notes and then we'll, I'll spruce it up before I send it to you as well. Okay. Cool, cool, Perfect. Cool. Um, get that coffee one, adventure, be engaged. Cool. And then, Awesome. So yeah, so you can make now there's another thing called ad copy. So you're basically what ad copy is. It's just a fancy term of saying, what are you going to say on your photo? What's going to, you usually want to be short. I'm Alec. I'm an awesome wedding. I, I'm Alec, a rad wedding videographer from Toronto. I like hanging out with cool couples, drinking wine and capturing meaningful memories. Like you can think of different ways to like say that's something. That's a good one. And then that's usually how I kind of word it. I just used your name. And then say, um, now, and then you have to have a call to action at the end of it. So the first one is like about you uh, and your service and how you are awesome and how you are going to help, how you will solve their problem. Mm. So their problem is they want an awesome videographer. So that, that's easy going. Maybe that's how you're going to solve their problem. That's more to your business plan of your core, whatever. So and then the next part is call to action. So is it... Um, click to claim a deal? Is it um, learn more at my website or is it follow me on Instagram or is it check out this video or sign up for this e-letter? Like a call to action is just, you want them to do something. You don't want to pay for an ad. So like just for them, for you to say, hello, I'm Alec, I'm a videographer without having a call to action because then there's no prompt for them that they only have two weeks to, to get a deal or you can make it very pushy or you can make it very low key. I like to keep it low key because that's just my marketing style. I like to be keep it pretty genuine and not hardcore sales. I don't like it to be, you only got three weeks to get this deal and you have to do it now. Like, I don't like it to be like that. It's very yeah. an easy going approach. Like, uh, yeah. So I, I can give more examples after, but yeah. So no, call back. No, but I, yeah, that definitely makes sense. So obviously I would be like more like my call of action would be, you know, get in touch with me for more details about my like service or whatever. Yes. Right? Yes. So I would make two ads, one with a photo, maybe it, one of the behind the scenes photo of you working and taking video with a client. You maybe even the photo I took of you um, <laughs> with, with the same sex couple. Cause then it no, for that ad, they know, okay, this, this videographer is working with the same sex couple and yeah. And yeah, so maybe that's good for that segment with those things. And then have uh, also another, like you can, you can boost uh, like your video to be shown in front of this ad set in front of these, these people. So that's a good way to show off your work. Um, it's nice to have different ads in the mix. So basically yeah. this is how it works. You have a Facebook campaign and then within that Facebook campaign, you have, um, a target. So people you're targeting, their interests, they they live in Toronto, they like wine, and then you make ads to target those people. So you make one ad that is a photo, one ad that's a video, one ad that's a, a GIF, and then those three ads will be targeted to that target of people. So you can make lots of ads, you can make one ad, and they'll all be shown up in the newsfeed of the 20 to 29 year olds that like coffee, wine, adventure that are engaged that live in Toronto. So okay. it's kind of like in a box a little bit. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how we're going to book you more weddings. We're going to make two ads, three ads that go to those interested people. You're not going to spend a lot of money because you're doing a good job at your marketing. If you made a Facebook, now the difference is if you make a productive Facebook campaign, you're not going to pay a lot of money because you're doing a good job at showing ads to people that are interested in it. If you made a Facebook campaign that was for engaged couples, but you targeted to grandpas that uh, want to buy socks, you're going to spend so much money because no grandpa wants to look at wedding videographers, right? So oh, you right. want to be, the more specific you are, the less money you're going to spend because Facebook wants you showing productive ads to productive people. They want it to be engaging. So they reward you with, uh, all right, we're only going to charge them 16 cents per click because it's relevant. So that is yeah. called the relevant score. The more relevant your content is to the people you're advertising to, the less money you'll spend. So you'll see once you start your ad a relevant score. Cool. Here, one second, just gotta re-click it. Oh, no, we still got nine minutes, cool. Yeah, so do you have questions? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm, I actually, I do have one thought that I thought about. Um, how long should I keep like an ad active? 
Cool. Like, so once I see it's like kind of just losing interest, or I'm like a like the timeline of a couple of days and then cut it, have a new one. I don't know. Yeah. So what I like to do is make whenever I make a new ad set, I make it go for a month, and then I check in in a week and I say. If it's really cheap for me to hit that marketing campaign, I'm like, cool, I'll keep this going. I'm getting lots of emails. Great. But if it's cost me like $2 per click, a dollar per click, I'm like, shit, I did something wrong. I need to redo it. I need to fix it. So I'll cancel it and redo it. But it's a learning curve. I've been doing Facebook ad for five years and I'm still learning. <laughs> but, okay. but right away, like it is 80% of where I get my business. And I'm telling you now, if I didn't do Facebook ads, I wouldn't have been a wedding photographer and videographer right away. Like in high school, that's when I started shooting weddings. If I tried to just tap into my organic reach, my organic network, um, I'd maybe have one wedding a year, two, maybe three. So I- Well, which is, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's my problem. Like I, to this day, I've only been um, depending on my, my organic reach. And mm -hmm. I mean, it has been great. Like people have been talking a lot about totally. my service. Yeah. I have got a lot of weddings. But I just need way more to consider myself some sort of like actual working videographer. You know totally, I mean? totally. I um, hear you. Yeah, and you've been doing so well. Like that's why I say bravo, Alec, because you're you're killing <laughs> it, and you're saving so much money because you don't have any cost of acquisition because it's all through your organic market. Yeah. Cool. But and now I, I need to push myself a bit more. Awesome. And, yeah. Now I'm gonna turn it on you. What tips and advice do you have to someone that wants to get into wedding videography or becoming a personal brand or anything? Uh, like um, I do remember, well, actually, you were actually part of the start when I thought about it. Um, I, got, I got lucky because it was just two different brides who asked me to film their wedding because I posted so many videos, different videos of me, you know, vlogging or a short film. And they were like, do you want to just try to film my wedding? But after that, I took it more seriously. And I actually, my first thing was to approach people who s started in right. yeah. wedding videography and photography. So I approached you, I approached two other like really great talented photographers to get their wisdom and knowing that they're like a similar personality than mine. So whatever they recommend and the tips and the tricks, I knew that I could apply that to me. Totally. And so, and then same with like with contract and cause I, my goal was just to start strong. So I didn't want to start with, you know, I'm a wedding videographer, email me and then I don't know, like I don't have the contract or I don't have the right. website. Yeah. So I wanted to just start strong and professional, even though I had no idea what I was doing. And so I just approached many people that were already going on and being successful and then got their little tricks and their tips. And then I kind of just applied it to my own little business. So that was like, for me, starting strong is important because for me, word to mouth is huge. So if you don't start strong, people are going to, start saying, yeah, I mean, he's good, but he's just not like professional level yet or whatever. And then that's for me, it's like my biggest issue. So totally. yeah, yeah, that's like, I guess a tip It's just start professional and strong. Even yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, just pretend you do and go for it. You know it. Right <laughs> yeah. on, brother. Woo. No, yeah. Those are awesome tips. And uh, all of you guys in the group, feel free to contact Alec for any questions. He's doing amazing. He's he has amazing work. Like I can't wait to bring him out to some of my weddings for him to, to add value to my work because I I'm going to learn a lot from him videography wise. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Uh, if you guys ever want to contact me as well, I do offer one on one coaching. Uh, for now, I'm going to, the first five people that contact me will be complimentary. But after that, then we'll, we'll, we'll see. I just want to help as many people as possible. So if you want to hang out online, I've, I've helped cut a cut. Quite a few other photographers get into the industry and have fun with yeah. it. And it's such a meaningful way to have a really good time as a side hustle or a full time thing that can replace your current day job or something that can transform with what you're studying at college. Then you're like, sweet, I'll get my degree and then I'll be a wedding photographer. It's, it's remarkable. So, lots of benefits. Yeah, Alex, it is. I definitely agree. Any, any inspirational words before we cut off? <laughs> um, no, just go for it, right? I mean, that's what you and I always do is just, just do what you gotta do. And and own it. Just go. Just go. Oh. Do it. Alright guys. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Alec and I are going to continue after this. Just there's some extra stuff that I can't show. <laughs> so, uh, Secrets. Yeah, so have a great day, guys. Hope to talk to you.